My name is Damon Arundel. I am a writer and a teaching artist, and I have a lesson for you today in poetry. Uh, the focus for today is list poems, and we'll get into what exactly list poems are in a moment, but where we're gonna start is with by making an actual list. So I want you to think about a color that you either like a lot or that you don't like a lot. Um, and I want you to make a list of 10 different things that, that color makes you think of. People, places, things, it could be anything. And there's no right or wrong to this, there's just what you decide. So I'm gonna go with the color red. And a simple way to think about this is to just draw a circle on your page um, for your color. And then think of it like a, a, a wheel. So for each thing that, uh, that I think of in connection to my color, I draw a line out to the side. So some things that come to mind for me when I think of the color red, I think of Valentine's Day, I think of blood, I think of my mom, uh, I also think of war, and I think of ice cream sundaes. Now the things on this list don't have to actually have the color. For example, my mom isn't red except when she gets sunburned. So it's things that remind you of the color. They could be people, places, things, anything that comes to mind. So 10 things that your color reminds you of. And I'll give you a minute or so to come up with those things. And I'm gonna keep adding to my list. And it's okay if you pick a color uh, that is totally different from mine. You can go with the red, you can go with something totally different, that's up to you. And again, it doesn't have to make sense. Could be things that have the color, could be something that's totally different. Take another 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna give you some prompts to help you to come up with things that you can add to your list. Another 10 seconds. Okay, so to add to your list, even if you didn't get to 10, I want you to think of a couple things. And there's no right or wrong to this, there's just what you come up with. And I really want you to tap into your imagination. So often when we think of temperature, especially like when you go to the sink, there's uh, what color is hot and what color is cold. Often we think of red as hot and blue as cold. But for this particular activity, you get to decide what your color represents. So if you decide that green is scalding hot or that green is, uh, is ice cold, you're right. So make a decision. What temperature is your color? You decide. Okay. Now, what season is your color? Is it spring? Is it summer? Is it fall? Is it winter? Is it somewhere in between? Is it more than one season? Again, you get to decide, there's no right or wrong, but make a decision. Let's take it even further. What time of day is your color? And you can be as specific as 3.33 p.m., or it could be the time that I get out of school, or it could be when the sun goes down, or it could be when my mom wakes me up for school. You get to decide. What time of day is your color? And write it down. And now think of media. And I'm, when, I'm, when I say media, I mean music. What artist or uh, what song or what type of music comes to mind when you think of your color. But you can think beyond that. It doesn't have to be music. It could be a book, a character that you love, or a movie that you've watched, or it could be a video game that you've played. What type of media comes to mind when you think of your color? Take a sec to write that down. Okay, two more prompts. 
What emotion is your color? What feeling comes to mind? Is your color angry? Is it embarrassed? Is it curious? Is it silly? Is it uh, afraid? You get to decide. And again, there's not, there's not a knowing. So if your brain goes, I don't know, it's not a knowing, it's a decision that you get to make. You decide if your color is embarrassed or if your color is proud. So make a decision. And again, whatever comes to mind is the right answer. And then the last one is gonna be a little bit weird. Texture. What does your color feel like if you could touch it? Is it soft? Is it hard? Is it smooth? Is it furry? Is it sharp? Is it rough? What texture is your color? Make a decision. So however many uh, items are on your list, you've just created a list of different things that your color reminds you of. And lists are good for all kinds of different things. Uh, lists are, things, uh, are good for things like groceries. Um, and lists can help us remember things. Uh, list poems um, follow a very specific formula. They use a lot of repetition. The beginning of every line is the same or the end of every line is the same. And that same repetition allows us to look at things, the same thing, over and over again in really different ways. In the same way that when we brainstorm together, we get lots of different perspectives on the same topic. So a list poem is actually very common with any type of music that you listen to. A lot of the songs that you grew up singing are list poems. Just like I know that if I say Old MacDonald, you know how, now have that song stuck in your head, this song that you haven't thought of in a very long time, but because you repeated it over and over again, because the lines repeat themselves over and over again, you still have that song stuck in your head. A lot of the choruses of the songs that you love are still stuck in your head because of repetition. So list poems, also known as anaphora poems, and anaphora is just a fancy word in Greek which means list. So list poems use a lot of repetition. Again, the beginning of every line is the same or the end of every line is the same. And we're gonna look at a poem, or rather a song, and the hook of that song or the chorus of a song called Bruise Brothers by the Blue Scholars. I'm gonna show you uh, these two amazing artists. So on this side, you have, uh, you have Geologic, the MC. Uh, he is of Filipino descent. And on this side, you have Sabzi, the DJ. Uh, he is of uh, Persian descent. So I have a really interesting mixing of cultures here. And what I love about these two is that it's old school hip hop in the sense of it's just the MC and the DJ. But I love what they've created in this particular song. Uh, and I'm just gonna recite the lyrics for you and you'll be able to follow along. And you'll notice the beginning of every line is the same. The blue is for the color of the collar of my mother and my father plus the scholars that we be. The blue is for the nighttime moon swinging tune of every blues man singing what it's like to not be free. The blue is for the water and sky in the middle of the fire I burn to find the light in the darkness. The blue is for the color of the bruise we use to be reminded that the body isn't made to be timeless. Every single uh, couplet here, every single stanza is addressing a different meaning for the color blue the color of the collar of my mother and my father. This is referencing blue collar workers. Um, a lot of the people that we are calling essential workers right now, people that work with their hands. Uh, blue collar work are folks that do what is often referred to as manual labor. Manual meaning mono, the word uh, in Spanish which means hand. I lift things, I build things, I move things, I fix things. This is talking about the hard work that manual laborers do. The color of the collar of my mother and my father plus the scholars that we be. It's talking about the sacrifices and hard work his mother and father had to do so that he'd have the opportunity to go to college. Just that from the color blue. Another potential meaning from the color blue. The nighttime moon swinging tune of every blues man singing what it's like to not be free. Often we think of blue as a sad color. Well, where did that come from? 
the music form that we know of or genre that we know of as the blues. Well, think about what's one of the saddest things that has ever happened in our country. Slavery. The songs that enslaved Africans sang while working in the fields were called Negro spirituals. They were about hardship and suffering. Those songs evolved into the blues, uh, one of our oldest original art forms. And those songs have evolved into lots of different styles, but the blues is the heart and soul of American music. So another thing that a lot of people don't know in regards to the blues is when they were singing those songs, it wasn't just look up at the moon, it wasn't just this sadness, it was also a way to pass on information that was vital for the Underground Railroad. So that when they would say things like look at the moon when it's in this part of the sky, it was about giving directions on how to get free. So this music has a tremendous amount of history to it. Again, a lot of meaning behind the color blue. A separate meaning. For fire and water, think about where have you seen, where have you seen blue fire before? Probably on a gas stove, because fire or the flame changes color depending on what you're using to fuel it. And then my favorite line, the color of the bruise we use to be reminded that the body isn't made to be timeless. What do bruises teach us? They remind us that we're not gonna be here forever, that we only have but so much time that we can get hurt, that we're not invincible. So we have four different messages here, four different possible meanings from the color blue. And we could go in lots of different directions. So what I'm gonna have you do is make use of your list and the style that the Blue Scholars have come up with to create our own poem, our own list poem. So I encourage you to stick with the color that you picked and you're gonna use a similar structure that the Blue Scholars use, but instead of the blue is for, you're going to say my blue is for, or whatever color you've picked, my yellow is for, my red is for, my green is for. You're gonna follow this similar structure. So the first line is my name is, and you plop in your name. So in my case, my name is Damon. The second line, my blank is blank. And in those blanks, you put my color is, and then you need a descriptive word or phrase to describe your color. Maybe your blue is sad. Maybe your green is powerful. Maybe your white is illuminated. Maybe your yellow is a lightning strike. Maybe your purple is a baby's cry. It could be anything that you want. And here's another thing. If you get stuck on that line, skip it and come back to it. The last thing that I want is for you to be sitting there, I'm not sure what the right thing to write is. The way that I think about it, if you're writing, you're doing it right. So feel free to skip lines and come back to it. Don't let yourself get stuck. So from there, you're gonna use that similar repetition. I picked the color purple. So mine goes like this. My name is Damon. My purple is playful. My purple is for the sunsets I reach for when I climb trees. My purple is for the paints on the walls and the halls I walk past while kids laugh and tell stories. My purple is for royalty and riches, for kings and queens, and the treasures I will never have. And your color can also express Whatever it is that you're feeling right now in the moment, something that isn't on your list. Maybe you drew a blank as soon as I said, what is your color representing? Maybe your color is, my purple is for the blank stare on my face when my mind goes blank because my stomach is empty and all I want is to stuff my face. It could be about anything you want it to be and it can go in lots of different directions. So I'm gonna give you all about 10 minutes to write your own. And again, first line, my name is blank. Second line, my color, whatever color you pick, my yellow, my green, my purple, my blue is, and then a descriptive word or phrase to describe that color. And then that following repetition, my purple is for, my purple is for, my purple is for. What I encourage you to do is to not write one word responses, to be descriptive. So notice I didn't just say, my purple is for sunsets. 
My purple is for royalty. I elaborated on those things. Go back to your list, use it as much or as little as you like, and that is going to help you to create your own list poem. So take a few minutes, dive on in, and again, as far as I'm concerned, if you're writing, you're doing it right. So if you slide into a different direction than the template or the structure that I've given you and you're still writing, that's fantastic. Why? Because you're still creating. You're still being expressive and you're still coming up with something. So whatever direction you want to take this in is the right thing, okay? So take a few minutes. I'm going to do a little bit of writing myself and we'll see what we come up with. Again, feel free to make use of that list that you came up with at the beginning. Use it as much or as little as you like. And the point of all this is just describing how you feel, describing what you're thinking about. Don't worry about whether it makes sense or not. It's just an opportunity for you to say what you're thinking and what you're feeling in some different ways. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna share a little bit of what I came up with and hopefully you'll take some time to share with someone around you, uh, whether it's right now, later tonight, or tomorrow. My blue is for silence. It feels like too much. My blue is for a world that is too much and not enough. My blue is for bright lights and warm eyes my blue is for a blank piece of paper that stares back at me. My blue is for the faces on the other side of the world. My blue is for the darkness that I don't get to see. My blue is for running out of time. Thank you for writing with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day.